Hi, I'm Dr. Sana Hashmi, and I write Prince Weekly column, I Own China. Uh, this week's column is on the COP28 summit that was concluded in Dubai last week and Xi Jinping's absence from the summit. Uh, so in this column, I examined what Xi's absence mean for the summit and China's own climate change action rules. So does this absence actually mean China's words on the climate change do not really match its actions? Uh, first, it's important to establish for issues such as climate change, that what is the first key to establish credibility? And the first key to establish credibility is to be present in the summits like these. But China was not represented at the highest level, while words world leaders from India, France, Italy, and a number of uh, leaders from Global South countries were present. Uh, but from the Chinese side, Vice Premier Ting Xuexiang and its climate in YCH and Hua were present. So this is also about how China is view viewing multilateral participation through a unidimensional lens. So Xi's participation in any multilateral fora signals China's selective multilateral engagement where she prioritizes participation that draws direct and undivided attention. So notably, he chose to skip the G20 summit in New Delhi, and the, perhaps the primary reasons behind that was the escalating tensions between India and China, but also the possibility of being sidelined and isolated in a gathering that included many Western leaders. Uh, but then last month, we also saw him attending the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit in the US. So his visit to the U.S. and the uh, meeting, the summit between Xi and the U.S. President Joe Biden became the central topics of discussion during the APEC. And then no one really talked about APEC as much, but then the main topic of discussion was Xi and Biden summit that took place uh, after a long, uh, after a year. Uh, the last meeting was in uh, Bali during the G20 summit last year. So despite Xi's absence at the COP28, China was still pushing its agenda. So one important development was China hosting the G77 plus China summit. Uh, this summit and whatever China was doing at the COP28 was very much aligned with its policy of integrating climate change uh, action into its broader ambition of assuming a leadership role among the global South. So um, apart from that, the state-owned media was also actively portraying China as a climate hero and the U.S. as a country that is not doing enough. So this also depicts China bringing the U.S.-China rivalry to the COP28 and it also tells us, uh, perhaps us, we have to ask this question if China is really serious about the climate change. Uh, this leads us to an important question. Uh, is China doing enough for the climate change? To be fair, China has surpassed some of its green energy goals before the stipulated deadline that was set by China itself. Um, and then another achievement has been that China has been, uh, the renewable sources such as solar and wind energy now constitute more than half of China's overall capacity. Uh, despite these uh, achievements, there are still major challenges that lie ahead for China and for China's role as a climate change crusader. First, China still heavily relies on polluting fossil fuels to support its energy intensive economy. And coal still accounts for roughly 60% of China's energy generation and over half of its overall energy consumption. Second, China is facing severe environmental crisis with natural disasters like typhoon, torrential rains and landslides. And in the past year alone, China has suffered staggering economic losses totaling the US uh, $42 billion. Uh, then the third point here is that now China stands as the world's largest carbon emitter with 12.7 metric tons of emissions annually. And the second is the US with 5.9 billion metric tons. Uh, while there are estimates suggesting China will be able to achieve its stated <clears throat> carbon reduction by goal by 2030, and we do see some serious statements coming out from China. For example, in 2022, China's Ministry of Ecology and Environment published uh, the National Climate Change Adaption Strategy 2035 that highlighted the perils of climate change as a pressing, as a very important non-traditional security threat. But despite all these statements, despite all the, the, the achievement that we have talked about, there are concerns regarding China's credibility as a serious climate change stakeholder. Uh, one of the main reasons would be that its slowing economy might impede the effectiveness of its effort. 
Uh, there could be job losses, particularly in the emission intensive se sector, such as the coal industry, and that would uh, that has a potential to impede China's climate change action. Um, second, China has a history of politicizing and weaponizing climate talks. And a very important example of this was China's suspension of climate talks with the US following House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan in August 2022. Then China's credibility as a climate crusader also falters when we consider the environmental degradation, rapid rise in temperatures, and melting glaciers in Tibet. And this is primarily because how China has been involved in uh, 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 controversial super dams in Tibet, or as well as the infrastructure that has been causing uh, ecological damage in Tibet. Um, then another important impediment here is China's positioning itself as a developing country when it talks about setting goals for the climate change. Uh, the, uh, China has been trying to shift responsibility to the so-called developing countries, and this is proving to be counterproductive, and this has the potential to impede effective regional responses. To conclude, it is important to acknowledge that without China's meaningful, active, and serious participation, there cannot be much progress on adopting, uh, adapting to and mitigating climate change. Uh, so the onus is on major powers here, and for Beijing, it's very crucial that it focuses on greater decentralization when it comes to climate change initiatives that China has been trying to take. And more importantly, it would be very important for China to separate political interests from climate change agendas. Thank you.